Council time, please. Um, if anyone had any questions uh, for Julian or Joseph. We've got some roving mics. Sorry, just pause a sec while we get the mic to you so we can all hear your question. Your, your question. Thank you. Yeah, Andrew Hogan from Point Polaris. Um, question on Equium. Uh, landlords want to have a good relationship with the tenant. So in your solution, who owns the relationship with the tenants? Um, the, the landlord still owns the relationship with the tenant. Um, you know, from an equity perspective, we're facilitating um, interactions between all members and, and all you know, the, the retailers. You know, we're facilitating that interaction, but still the landlord you know, has a tenant still. Um, there's still a lease there and, and we're, um, if we think of Equium as an amenity into the building in the same way as the Equium and everything else. We do our job right um, uh, and there is another video I was going to show where the, the, the Equium itself, apart from the fact that you've got our staff uh, and our engagement team, community managers, fully engaging those people, again, that's, I don't, don't want to speak of them that way, but it is an amenity, from an from a asset perspective, it's another amenity, right? So it's, these are the things that go to making the experience of being here better, but we're not fundamentally changing those relationships. It's just an improvement and a better experience um, that's a combination of the asset, the physical space, but then the personal interactions with the concierge team and the technology interactions with the, with the, with the, tool, with the tools. Is there another question? There's one for Joseph, perhaps, or? Thank you. Hi, Derek Clough from Landroom. When are the valuers going to get on board? When are the valuers going to get on board and appreciate the, the, the added value that this technology contributes? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, obviously, there, there is someone on board uh, for WeWork um, you know, with, with a, a huge valuation, but um, I think I, I, I'm not a valuer, I, I'm the tech guy, so it's possibly uh, not the best person to say, but I think um, realistically we, we've had some good stories around, uh, around retention um, and around, if I do my job right, if I provide the best solution, the best experience that I can with the help of Shivani's team and, and, the, and the concierge, then I measure my success by how many how many of my tenants would revolt if the owner of their company said, we're going to get a new space and it's not powered by equity? If I've done my job right, then those staff don't want to leave. And, and they, they pick up a and say, no, we're not leaving, we want to stay at an equity building. That's how I measure my success over the next five, 10 years. That's, that's what I'm going to be basing it on. And if I don't do my job right, then the valuations don't go up. But if I do, then I would expect those valuations to absolutely start to, start to increase for sure. I Oh, look, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that um, the greater the experiences can be and that, that just that, that simple piece of human connection, I think I described it earlier when having a chat, that yeah. you know, we're kind of, um, we, we're, we actually like to sort of be around other humans and that, that concept that someone might just remember your name when you walk in in the morning, I think is kind of uplifting. Um, and, and the fact that they know probably that the key tenant No, I, I do talk loudly. <laughs> there we go, it's live. <clears throat> so for me, I think that, that any time you have those, those moments, those touch points, um, I think that as, as human beings, we love that, we enjoy it. It actually, it actually just peps your morning up or your day, etc. I think the, and that's from the, the general customer perspective. I think treating office uh, tenants uh, as, as customers in, in terms of the, the business owners, etc. which we're in a new, a new paradigm at Chadston to, um, with 30,000 square metres of office space now and 17 national and international tenants. We, we do have a job to do to actually um, help the, all of the tenants understand what are the amenities, the value adds that actually are adjacent in the centre. We don't necessarily creating 
you know, new content or new things. It's actually just exposing people to them and telling them about the, the new things that are happening or the events that are planned, etc. So we probably have the luxury of actually having inbuilt, um, you know, drivers but we're probably not great at actually joining the dots between the unique things that are happening in centre or the fact that certain stores have got experiential things planned for that month or that week or fashion festival events, et cetera, and communicating it back um, to the office tenant. So, um, you know, I just see there's amazing potential um, for Equim and what they do um, in whether it's, the, whether it's the experience bit or it's just actually joining the dots between really cool things that are happening in your precinct or adjacent to your building or in public spaces, but actually you know, connecting it back to the people. Um, yeah, a question for Joseph. Um, we can see, I think, from your talk that we're seeing a retail centre, a traditional shopping centre, turning a little bit more uh, towards a lifestyle-based offering for the customers or for the guests to the centre. You know, how do you see, like, um, traditionally non-traditional uses or uh, tenants like we work or collab type spaces, and then uh, wellness type um, um, users, sort of uh, taking or taking part in the retail of the future. How do how do you see those things fitting into the assets and the rejuvenation of assets? Um, look, I, I I couldn't support those ideas anymore. To be honest, I think I think in in the in the world that we live in, where we kind of generally are time poor. That, that those extra tasks that you can squeeze into a day um, with, and, and the amenity with which you can do it. So I think the piece around worker engagement um, or, or tenant engagement I think probably comes from the fact that you communicate to people that there's there's extra things you can get done in your day. You know, for us and, in our, and, and I guess we work potentially locating in centres, imagine when you can actually go and, and do the 20 life chores that you might need to get done in your lunch break because you can walk out of your office, uh, go to the bank, get to the Medicare branch or go and, uh, you know, grab a GP's appointment or actually go and do some bespoke shopping that you can't sort of do anywhere else but actually just happens to be that if you're located in the centre that you get access to that. So I think the nexus between amenity and the place where you work is probably, is probably um, you know, I think it's on, it's on, it's on a growth trajectory. Um, it's certainly a key platform for us that we propose to leverage um, in our business. Uh, and I think on the wellness, on, on the wellness piece, um, right, and, and probably just a touch in a different, in a different industry space, in, in the conferencing and event space, which um, uh, with our potential hotel at Chadston, where we're looking at having some significant conferencing capabilities. I think the days of, of, of conferencing and it kind of becoming a binge event is probably changing to the fact that if you actually you're in a day conference or a residential conference or the like, is it actually you kind of feel better for having gone to it, not because your brain's been enriched, but you actually feel better because because there were there were active events planned or you partnered with Nike and they did some sort of you know bespoke boot camp type of arrangement that actually you know was actually good from a health and wellbeing perspective. So, short answer is the relationships are, are tremendous between them. Uh, I guess the magic is making sure that you can you, you can you know get the right get the right some of the right returns for those new uses at a at a base level, and then and then start to value the the increased footfall generation that you know by bringing employers in employment uh, in, into into the into the shopping centre space. There's no doubt that there's that there's footfall generation and MAT growth to be had. And do you see um, uh, trading hours extending because of the different types of uses, like, for example, uh, a pack fair type operation now that has changed the focus of when the main trading hours actually occur? Um, I think the, the greatest enabler of, of trading hour change is, is probably entertainment uses and, and food and beverage, um, uh, and probably the, the, the push in many regards needs to be around experience dining. I, I think that. Um, we had an interesting presentation from Brain and Poulter in our office yesterday who are food and beverage sort of experts. Um, one of the things they probably didn't touch on as much was if you're going to drive PM trade, you really need, you really have a different reason to visit the centre. It's probably an experience based visit, so you want to go and um, you're visiting for, for a food reason in the first instance um, or, or a beverage reason. And then, if if the retail's still trading, you're going to convert. You're going to convert sales. I think it's just about thinking, thinking it through a little differently. That, um, 
you know, daytime trade is no doubt still, you know, sort of it's shopper or it's worker related. Extending hours is really about having that value add proposition, which is cool bars or cool restaurants that you'll that you'll go and enjoy time in. But you also capture from the local community as well. The, the interesting thing about um, shopping centres, I find, is that they're normally in a demogra they're normally in catchments that are underserviced by by restaurant offers. Um, and I kind of hate the idea of building restaurants in contrived environments. And probably my point about Crown here was that no matter where it is, whether you're out in the suburbs at a, at a neighbourhood or sub-regional, is, is, is sort of flip it inside out and actually provide cool spaces that, um, you know, expose you to some light and some activation and, you know, um, landscaping, etc. Is, is sort of less indoor and a little more, a little more alfresco outdoor. Um, so you create some, some unique spaces and I think that, that, that drives the, that'll drive the overall footfall and validates longer trading hours. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your, for your questions and thank you to our speakers. We'd like to take now a short break and recommence the second half of the symposium at uh, 5.30. Please feel free to um, interrogate our speakers during the break. Thank you.